Hello again. Um, so I'm going to, once again, Sandy Walsh, I'm going to show you some um, a demo of the StackTac V3 Sandbox dev environment. And I'll walk you through all the different components that fire up. Uh, if you looked at the previous video, that should make a lot more sense now. You should understand the different components, how they hang together, and what the overall architecture is that we're shooting for. So this is just to show you some pieces that are uh, as they're working. So if you do a git clone on this on the StackTac v3 sandbox repo, so if you, again if you go to um, GitHub StackTac, you'll see all the components that we talked about in the last video, right here. One of these is this sandbox, which basically gives you some configuration scripts and things for uh, firing this thing up. And the docs are a little bit primitive right now. Maybe this video will be a little bit make it a little bit more clear. So we've done that here, and we've got our sandbox repo. There's a couple of config files that you need to set up. One is your credentials file for publishing to Swift, or in this case, Cloud Files. Um, your Yagi configuration file. And then there's an Oahu config Python file. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second as well. And then there's your stack distiller configuration script. So uh, a lot of this is cookie cutter sort of template stuff uh, that you'll get automatically when you when you clone the project, but some of it you have to tweak for your database or for your server, that sort of thing. If I start off with the shoebox configuration, uh, a lot of this is, like I say, cookie cutter, um, and the Yagi project gives you a lot of good detail on how to set the stuff up. The thing that I'm doing here right now is I've got the main handler in Yagi that I've got set up is a shoebox handler, which is going to take the notifications as they come in, archive them locally, and then uh, push them up to Swift uh, when they're done. So that's what we see down here. This is all the shoebox configuration. So it, as the events come in, we'll store them in the working location. If we want, we can move them over into an archive location when they're done. It's going to roll on size of one megabyte, which is pretty tiny. Uh, this is how the distiller breaks the, the data down. It's done in this configuration file. And then in the callbacks, we've got a whole bunch of callbacks here. So we move the file, we upload it to Swift, and then we delete the file afterwards. So we move it over to the archive file, we upload it, and then we delete the archive. And then we've got our credentials for Swift stuffed away in here. Uh, and then where we're going to store it. So uh, again, look at the Yagi project for that. If we look at... Uh, a sample configuration file for Swift is just a username and an API key. So you need to replace that with your own stuff. The distiller is used for taking the large notification payload and breaking it down into something smaller. We actually use that in Shoebox as well for extracting some of the, the important traits out of the payload um, that we can use as metadata inside the shoebox. So every event as it gets stored, we, all, we store the large full JSON payload, but also there's a smaller metadata layer that's stored with it as well. So searching for old uh, events can be done relatively quickly. So we pull that information out here using Stack Distiller. Again, look at this, the Stack Distiller docs for, for making sense of that. The configuration of um, Oahu is a little bit more complex here because we actually use a Python file for it. Um, th so the reason is, is we have these uh, pipeline definitions which have uh, handlers and rules and things. And right now we're doing this programmatically in Python. That's going to change to a YAML grammar. In the meantime, though, um, we all we have to do is instantiate this config object and implement this one method here which is called get sync engine which is the driver essentially and so here's what we've got here we've got a trigger rule that says that if the stream has been inactive for 60 seconds and trigger uh, the rule ID is called request ID because we're differentiating each of our streams by request ID uh, if we passed in a callback then uh, use it otherwise we're just going to use this simple uh, pipeline processing callback which is just going to print out, I'm, you know, I'm processing this stream. 
and we make a rule for it. So we say, here's the rule ID, here's the differentiating trait on that pipeline, so on unique request IDs. The triggering rule is going to be if it's gone inactive, and when it does trigger, we want to call the callback. So we could have a whole list of these rules in this list. We pass them into our driver, and we return that back. In this case, we're going to use a MongoDB driver. Um, this is just some other stuff here for uh, how big a chunk of events you want to do in the pipeline. So if you want to, you know, just do one at a time, you can. In this case, we're going to grab, look for a hundred um, chunks, a hundred events at a time per per call, and then for expiry checks, we'll do a thousand at a time. Uh, the completed chunks is just going to do all of them all at once. Again, you don't have to override these if you want. This is really the only one that you're really interested in, is getting the driver, setting up the rules, and because it's used in a lot of different places, since uh, Yagi used it, since all the daemons use it, um, since uh, Quincy uses it in the API, we want to have one place to do that. So we use Simport uh, for defining, you know, pointing to this file, and really all we're saying, if I look, give you an example here, so this, this would be a Simport type string, this is the, the path to add to the uh, Python path, and then this is where the config file comes from. Um, so it's as simple as that. You just point it to here and uh, anyone can access it. So you don't have to, you know, the, this little uh, config file, you don't need to make an installer for it. You don't need to do any entry points. You just point to it and use it. Real simple. So um, now we just want to launch this whole thing up. So. What I've got here, um, I'm gonna, I had one thing disabled here, I'm going to re-enable this. This is the, the Notagen. So Notagen is the simulator for all the events, so I want that to fire up and get us a whole bunch of new events coming through. And then these are all the other tabs here. So we've got two Yagi event workers um, reading from the shoebox config. We've got Quincy firing up, uh, which is our API layer. We've got um, our pipeline daemon running checking for expired pipelines, we've got two checking for ready state, and then we've got one daemon running for a completed state. And these are going to poll every two seconds, uh, the ready ones are going to poll every second because we want to have overlap here, we want to have race conditions, so we're try trying to push them a little bit. Again, this is just a simport config, um, uh, a, a simport reference off to the config file, it says in the current directory, load that config file. And then we have a place here for, for Klugman if you want to mess around with the API a little bit. Again, you don't have to mess with that stuff um, because the, the defaults are, are okay. So let's just start it off. So now we'll run build. And the first thing it does is it, um, it just did a git clone on all the repos and fired up the screen here. So now we've got, if we look over here, we see our event simulator running and it's pretending to create a whole bunch of instances and resize them and delete them and do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Over here we've got our um, Yagi workers that are consuming all these events as they're coming in and stuffing them off into shoebox. We've got another one right here doing the same thing. So they're both reading from the same queues. Quincy is running here waiting for some requests. This is our expired daemon um, I'm not using the pipeline in this one right now, I'm just doing the shoebox one just so I can keep this separate. So there's there's nothing for it to find here. Same with the uh, same with the ready queue, there's nothing to do here. Uh, all right. they're, they're, because I'm not using the, the pipeline in this setup. Um, and same with the complete, there's no completed queue so nothing's getting deleted. And then we've got Klugman right here uh, if we want to talk to the API. So uh, let's. I want to. I haven't tried this in a while. Yeah, there we go. So there's some there's some fake events that are that we just pulled out of the out of the uh, API. So what happened to these events? Now these all are, are getting processed here. If we go over to this uh, browser, and we this is my Rackspace Cloud Files repo, and if I do a refresh on this. Give it a second. There we go. So you can see that these are 
uh, all these little archives of events that just came through, and these are coming up from multiple Yagi workers. So I've we configured it that when the size gets to one megabyte, then close off the archive. So we can see the date, break down to the millisecond timing, which you need for for that many. Uh, um, that's what you need for that for when you have a lot of workers, you need millisecond resolution. And all these files are uploaded. So these are the raw notifications as they're coming in, and anyone can access these and and use the uh, shoebox library to read them and pull out all the raw events afterwards. So that's a that's a very basic operation. What we'll do here now is we'll just close this one down, and we'll change the configuration to use the pipelines. Um, so let's look at our shoebox config and we'll disable the worker here for shoebox and I'm going to enable the one for Oahu so this is our actual pipeline stuff now ideally this will all be uh, these these Yagi handlers will do both but right now I'm just keeping it separate just for illustrative purposes and we'll do the same thing we'll just uh, launch this again And you can see we're uh, reinstalling all the different uh, packages from the Git clones. So if I had any ma made any local changes, I would see these now in my running environment here. Again, generating some events. Um, so now we, we're reading from the queue and pumping them into the pipeline. So every 30 seconds, I think, we'll get an update on how many events it added. In this case, it just added 1,000 events. The other worker here added a thousand events, nine hundred events. So, both of these workers are consuming and stuffing stuff into the Oahu pipeline. Quincy hasn't changed, uh, but now we see the expired checks because remember this is using the inactive trigger pipeline. So after um, sixty seconds of not seeing any activity for a particular request ID, it marks the thing as ready. So. It's checking all these all these different, and we're doing a chunk size of a thousand, so it's only going to check a thousand events, and none of these are ready yet because 60 seconds hasn't elapsed. We'll let that keep going. Over on this side here, oh here we go. So it started coming through now. Let's just go back to window four. There we go. So we start to see some of these events down in the bottom down here are starting to expire. So it's been 60 seconds since we started, and now some of these uh, streams are starting to time out and uh, go active. And when we do that, our callback is the one that just prints off processing stream such and such, and we see a stream ID, which rule triggered it, which was request ID, and it's in the ready state now. And we see these coming through. Also, you'll notice, if I uh, just pause this a little bit here, that it processed, out of 100 requests to process a stream, it only got half of them. 50 of them were locked because we have two of these workers that are running here. Uh, so in Windows 6 here, you'll see the same same worker running here, and it's fighting for contention for these process streams as well. It just so happened that we, we because we ran this in stream, they ran it very close to the same start time, and we had a good sense of contention here. So we can see the locking is occurring between the two workers, and only one at a time is actually doing the processing on the stream. So after it does this processing, it marks it as completed. And so if we go over to Windows 7 here, um, this is the one that's looking for all these completed streams and is starting to purge them out. And you can see that we're only getting very small chunks because um, it takes about seven seconds for each of these uh, workers to run through. Uh, the MongoDB implementation that we're using right now isn't the most efficient. So it's uh, it's not a great throughput just yet, but we're going to be tuning that, and, and Winchester will be using MySQL, and it'll be a lot better uh, performance from that. So now we see we, we, we've seen you know events coming in, going through the pipeline, getting triggered, working its way all the way through the system, and uh, so our generator is finished. This is still pulling events out of the system, and still going through blocks of a thousand at a time. And that's it. So now if I wanted to do some work in here, if I wanted to uh, mess around with the code, I could uh, go back. One of the things that we get here is this um, 
this git directory. If I go into git, and now we've got all the StackTech v3 repos in here that I can actually go in and, and modify the code. So if I want to go into uh, Oahu and uh, do some work on, I don't know, the uh, the MongoDB engine, I could make my changes right here, restart Sandbox, and all those changes will be done locally. So I can create a branch, do my work, um, and then carry on. I don't have to... Uh, you know, do full setups or anything like that to uh, to continue on. So it's very fast for development. You can edit right in here, and because we're using the notification generator and not DevStack or OpenStack, uh, you're pretty well self-contained. So you're going to see a lot more happening with this. Uh, we're going to keep working on Sandbox and making it uh, more flexible and easier to uh, to develop against. But if you have any questions, again, add comments at the end of the uh, video or just uh, ping me on IRC or email. And uh, look forward to your feedback. Thanks very much.